It isn't the nuclear weapons. We're just looking for an excuse. This is war propaganda to give us, to get the American people behind the bombing of Iran. Just like the war propaganda got us all worked up and thought we had to go get uh, Saddam Hussein, which was absolutely unnecessary. Back in May at the Republican debate, you kind of got into it with Rudy Giuliani. And you were talking, I'm, I'm sure you remember this very well, you were talking about the root causes of 9-11. I'm going to play for you the little clip that I know you've seen a bunch of times. Take a look. Non-intervention was a major contributing factor. Have you ever read about the reasons they attacked us? They, they attack us because we've been over there. We've been bombing Iraq for 10 years. We've been in the Middle East. I think Reagan was right. We don't understand the irrationality of Middle Eastern politics. It's an extraordinary statement of someone who lived through the attack of September 11, that we invited the attack because we were attacking Iraq. I don't think I've ever heard that before. And I've heard some pretty absurd explanations for September 11. In a nutshell, he said what you were saying was absurd, and then he got a, a, a loud round of applause for saying that. What did you make of his response to you? Well, what is extraordinary is that he didn't know the real reason. Even Wolfowitz admitted that our base in Saudi Arabia prompted Osama bin Laden to prompt this attack. The real reason they come here, the word is occupation. And if for any reason we continue to believe this naively that they come here and they want to attack us because we're rich and free, we can't, we can't take care of this problem. So that is crucial. But uh, I think the really amazing thing is that he had never heard of it because the 9-11 Commission report actually identified this as one of the reasons they came here uh, to attack us. Bases over there, the sense of occupation, our persistence and in interference in, in that land, as well as the bombing of Iraq that had been going on all through the 90s. And if we fail to see that uh, that is the cause, we can't solve our problems. When we come back, what Ron Paul really plans to do with Social Security if he's elected and who he'd vote for if he were to drop out of the race. Republican presidential candidate Ron Paul is trailing badly in the polls. He hasn't broken 2% in national polls. He's tied for dead last in the Republican field. Whether he's running to actually win or if he just wants to get his message across, it is a message that certainly is setting him apart from the pack. Dr. Paul, a former obstetrician, basically wants to remake his party. Here's the rest of our interview. You have called for abolishing Social Security, CIA, Homeland Security, uh, and, and actually a, kind of a long list of other things that most people would consider to be fairly entrenched in our society. Regardless of what happens to your campaign, do you think any of those things on that list I just read uh, could have traction? I've never voted once to spend one penny out of Social Security. I want to make the system work while it's there. It's not ideal, it's not part of the Constitution, but I say that the only way we can tide our people over who are dependent, we've taught them to be dependent, we don't want to throw them out in the street, and we can save hundreds of billions of dollars if we give up on our American empire, bring these troops home, actually cut the deficit, and take care of these people. So there's no way, I, that's not the reason I'm running for the presidency. I mean, theoretically, yes, they shouldn't have been started, but I'm the the one that has the answer on how we can take care of these people since I've never spent any of those uh, trust funds money anyway. Is there a point that you have considered at which you will call it quits if in fact the numbers don't start coming in, the number of people who say they're going to vote for you? I mean, is it, you know, 1%, 2%, 5% when you get to Iowa and you get to New Hampshire? Is there a point you say, you know, if, it, if you don't start getting the numbers, you got to be out of the race? I haven't thought much about that because when I started early on, I had no idea what would happen, and it's about a hundredfold greater than I ever dreamed of. And we're we're growing on an exponential curve. If you look at our supporters, if you look at the money, it's unlike the other campaigns, and they're going down. So uh, I think I think you have to reassess a campaign continuously. But we have some early primaries coming up, and I predict those numbers that you just quoted aren't going to be accurate. If you weren't in the race, who would you vote for? 
I have no idea because I said I'd vote for anybody who would uh, change his policy in the, in the Middle East and bring our troops home and, and have a non-intervention foreign policy. And so far, I haven't met anybody. And I'm also very interested in monetary policy and fiscal conservatism. And right now, I don't see that. I think the Republican Party has lost their way. I think they're a big government policy. The neoconservatives have taken over. The old traditional uh, conservative Republicans uh, of the old right, they, they've lost uh, they, they've lost their impact, and I'm trying to revive that. If you pull up articles on you consistently, you'll see, on occasion, but, but consistently, there are a lot of people who describe you as a flake, and I, that's a quote, uh, that's not my word, that's the, their word in, in the article. What do you make when you read something like that about yourself? Well, that and radical and extremists and all that, I think they're in charge. I think anybody who believes you can print money uh, out of thin air and think the dollar is going to maintain its value and not cause economic harm. I think that's a flaky idea. It's pretty bizarre to me. And I, I think a uh, $500 billion uh, increase in the national debt, that's flaky. I think an American empire is flaky and weird and, and not wise. It's unconstitutional. So, yeah, it's terminology. They're playing on words. But uh, right now, uh, our campaign is growing because most Americans uh, comp consider what's going on in Washington pretty flaky. And I, they want something some changes made. Right now, it looks like you've got some momentum. Dr. Ron Paul, the congressman, thanks for talking with us, and presidential candidate, I Thank must you. add. Thanks for talking with us this evening. We certainly appreciate it, sir. Thank you.